let's go ahead into uh, the battery systems a lot right and uh, let's discuss some of the battery types and uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, the battery simulation as well so if you see there are two major categories of the battery uh, one is primary cells and the secondary cell the primary cells are actually the one time usage they are non rechargeable the secondary are nothing but rechargeable and please uh, be sure that the lithium batteries or the coin, coin type lithium batteries you will find in some of the clocks or uh, wristwatch or maybe other toy applications those lithium batteries are non rechargeable but lithium ion batteries are rechargeable batteries or secondary batteries so one of the uh, king of the battery even today uh, is a lead acid battery and then there are several uh, configuration or several chemistries coming up uh, which evolved uh, over the period of time with nickel cadmium metal air nickel metal hydride one which is famous with uh, toyota prius uh, toyota prius which is a hybrid electric vehicle which uses this type of battery nickel metal hydride this battery you might have seen with your cordless phone or maybe some other toys uh, which you might have played with and if i classify this then there are four or five different classifications right so the lithium ion batteries itself can be classified into four or five different chemistries let's see what are this chemistries and uh, this chemistries okay uh, let me go ahead with uh, the difference between primary and secondary and then we are going to discuss about uh, what are the classification of the lithium ion batteries so let's let's first discuss about primary and secondary cells so they are like double a and triple a cells which are normally used in day to day life where it's a remote control or maybe any other appliances you see right like a wall clock or something like that so they are really low cost and what happens after they are uh, used when you scrap them the scrap person is going to uh, gather all such small cells and they are going to get recycled at the factory itself right so the secondary rechargeable batteries are those batteries where reverse chemical process is possible what is that reverse chemical process where electrical energy gets converted into chemical energy so there are two major types of the battery let's discuss first very primary type of battery uh, which is uh, the lead acid battery so if you have in any case open up a 12 volt battery used in your motorcycle or uh, the scooter you will see that there are six number of cells and there are plates right there are two materials of different plates and there are they are called electrodes so the electrodes are the main elements of the internal construction of the battery and they are called cathode and anode the cathode is positive anode is negative so usually the cathode material is oxide or sulfide uh, in case of a lead acid battery they are lead oxide material uh, there will be a separator material in between which is present here and there is a positive and negative electrodes right so here you will find a sulfuric acid uh, which is nothing but acting as an electrolyte so what is an electrolyte so there are two electrodes they are major uh, in construction of a battery but there are two different chemicals which are electrolyte and a separator so here you will find this as a separator between two electrodes and this part is actually the electrolyte so you might have seen uh, some of the batteries where you have to add some water frequently or like that they are nothing but uh, the lead acid batteries where you are uh, actually improving the quality of the uh, sulfuric acid and the distilled water right so these are uh, the electrolyte and the separator you might have studied about these batteries maybe in your school days right and these are very popular batteries uh, some more advanced batteries are used in uh, electric vehicle applications as well if you uh, see the golf cart and uh, if you see some of the forklifts right or low speed and high torque application vehicles they are using this batteries even today right so lead acid batteries are even uh, very popular for some of the electric vehicles as well so what are the differences right what are when you will find the lead acid batteries and when you will find the lithium ion batteries so lead acid batteries are flooded type gel type or absorbent glass material type and they are nothing but uh, used for the purpose of 
providing the required cranking amperes or to start the engine right and how these batteries will get charged they are going to get charged by the engine driven alternator right so these batteries will provide the starting power and they will get charged when the vehicle is running the new technology where the battery is impro improvised that battery can be used for the source of propulsion and these batteries are lithium ion type and they can be charged through the external charger and yes there are safety concerns also with the new type of the battery and there can be several applications of automotive right starting from a small bicycle to the aircraft and the truck there are so many applications in automotive now let me show you some of the comparison of lithium ion battery chemistries so what are this lithium ion battery chemistries so here is a table which shows the comparison of all five different popular chemistries these are popular in the sense that they are commercially available they are deployed and they are uh, they have been found useful for electric vehicle as well so one is the lithium ion phosphate lfp in short known as and another is neat uh, nickel manganese cobalt this is there is another uh, cobalt chemistry which is called as cobalt oxide then you have another uh, chemistry which is lithium manganese oxide lmo and these are uh, the last one is lithium titanate oxide so these are five popular chemistries of the electrode materials of the lithium ion batteries so from what are these names what are the short forms they are nothing but the electrode materials of the batteries so those lithium ion cells using the lithium ion phosphate material they are called lfp right so what are the differences uh, if you explore this data in the table they have very different voltages right if you see the lithium titanate oxide where the number of cycles of the charge discharge are very high right compared to other batteries they have very less value of the voltage right so they have 2.4 volt nominal voltage right and their operating range is from 1.8 to 2.85 so they have the least voltage but they are better in terms of number of life cycles so all these batteries are having one parameter which is uh, less or compromising but another which is better suitable right here if you see uh, your mobile phone uh, your cell phone batteries are usually at 3.7 volt and they are of usually this chemistry right so if you open up your cell phone batteries which uh, most of the new cell phone you will not be able to uh, actually remove your battery but uh, you will find in the old cell phone batteries they are of 3.7 volt type so these are of this chemistry so what are these parameters uh, how much energy they have per liter or per kilogram that is given how fast you can charge and discharge so nowadays your cell phone batteries are uh, fast charge right maybe you can uh, charge them up to 80 percentage of the level in uh, uh, around 30 minutes or 45 minutes right so they have a really fast and uh, charge rate and discharge rate right here you can see uh, the temperature uh, limits right uh, what are the at what temperature the thermal runaway or the thermal hazardous can happen so they are uh, also declared in this table so here if you find typical lithium batteries they are of five different types and they have all together five different characteristics here this is a typical com configuration this is not applicable to all cells they are uh, just uh, to get the idea about it right and if you see the cost the higher life cycle batteries are very very costly right here you will you will find the cost is uh, at the 3 point and these batteries are really available at the cheaper rate compared to uh, the lithium titanate oxide now the same things if we compare on the five points with a different uh, graph right here you can see these are the trade off among the five principal lithium ion batteries right so what are these five parameters one is a specific energy specific power the performance is in terms of the charge and discharge c rate the lifespan is nothing but the number of life cycle it can get charge and discharge and the cost is nothing but uh, another parameter where if you have the lesser value uh, for example in uh, the case of uh, lithium titanate 
oxide the lesser value means that it is costliest battery right so the life span it has got five star out of five but in the cost it has got very very high and therefore it is uh, lower over here so which one you find uh, covering the most area on all these five fronts right so uh, sorry there are six parameters so all six parameters are greatly covered by probably this chemistry so people are working on this chemistry uh, and using it for uh, the propulsion battery uh, obviously there are uh, various different chemistries in this itself right or there various different types of the battery various manufacturers uh, for this battery itself so this is one of the battery which is popular for because it is having all the parameters having either three or four stars right so it is covering most of the area on the comparison table while if you see uh, the performance is uh, are quite very good and safety are quite uh, better for the other cells but they are very very costly right so the chemist or the chemical engineers are still undergoing a very huge uh, research or there are so many researchers working in various companies and universities who are trying to address these issues that can't we make a high performance battery at low cost or what are the other materials which we can explore like maybe for example uh, zinc uh, which is uh, widely available uh, for example and uh, can we can we have those kind of uh, batteries available right so there are uh, the battery selection criteria as a user of the battery as a powertrain engineer we have to look at what are the requirements right what is the type of the vehicle if you see the type of the vehicle is going to have very high fast charge discharge rate and it does not require so much amount of energy on board right then you you may choose one of the costliest battery which is lithium titanate oxide so which one is going to be chosen by the powertrain engineers that depends on what is the type of the vehicle which they are working on right so if if you see for example a car a car itself can be of different type right or the, there may be different cars so a personal vehicle which may not be moving in a 20 kilometers or 30 kilometers in a in a day average right may not require very high capacity of a battery right and if that car is uh, available uh, to the near charging point then also the number of uh, or the cap capacity of the battery required is going to be greatly reduced but if you think of the same car which is actually a shared ride right may be given to any ride sharing platform like uh, uber for example then those battery packs has to be of very high capacity so that you uh, have to ensure that they can run 24 7 and uh, there is a little time for charging right so even in this chemistries uh, the battery selection is very very uh, going to be important right so with this uh, i hope you have got enough idea about what are the different battery chemistries and how they are measured uh, performances with uh, let's discuss what are the battery elements right if you by any chance uh, get to open up your laptop power battery uh, battery pack or maybe your uh, uh, power bank where which you usually carry to charge your cell phone without any uh, plug right so you will find this kind of a battery right so this is what uh, a lithium ion cell uh, looks from inside so this is usually a cylindrical cell and it is quite larger than your normal double a and triple a cell and this is the complete uh, cross-sectional view of this cell and if you remember uh, your cell phone battery cell which is a 3.7 volt and usually 3.5 to 4 ampere hours is actually having wrapped up in a material and it is cased inside a cylindrical battery right it's the same material or the same type only changes the form factor right so here you can have a simple battery which is like this you have uh, one electrode like place like this another electrode place like this this and you you can have positive terminal and negative terminal right so instead of a rectangular format or a square format like this if you wrap this around then it is it can be placed in a cylinder and you can have a cylindrical form factor 
right so what are the battery elements or what are the constructional uh, things you will find the anode and cathode which are nothing but electrodes right so here you will find something which is yellow and the blue they are anode and cathode materials and between anode and cathode material what will be the material that is yes it is going to be a separator so anode cathode separator and electrolyte all are placed together and they are going to form positive and negative of the cell right so here whatever is the casing is actually the negative terminal uh, so I will say the bottom of the cell is negative terminal and the top of the cell is connected to the positive electrode so there are various types of materials uh, usually majority of those batteries use the graphite as a anode and depending on the cathode material their battery chemistries are different so these cells are quite popular and they are uh, actually known as 186y0 cells right so by any chance if you have uh, open up your uh, laptop battery pack or maybe your power bank you will find uh, something similar to 186.50 batteries or these are cells how does the name came to 186.50 because they are having 18 mm diameter of the cylinder and 65 mm of height so this height of the cylinder is 65 mm and this diameter is 80 18 mm so that is why the cells are known as 186.50 and based on the operating temperatures, number of life cycle, and the energy density and the capacity, they are of different types. And there are several 186.50 cell variants, right? So they are not all same. They will all look mechanically same, but they are not all electrically or chemically same. If you open up, uh, you will find this kind of uh, material inside. So here you have the casing and the complete cell on this part. and completely dismantle cell on this part so if you move from this to this right uh, you will find there are so many materials placed inside right so here let's say this is a cathode cathode uh, electrode this is let's say anode and here you have a separator all these three are placed one upon each other and wrapped into and placed inside a cylinder and then you have the positive terminal and the negative terminal along with some protection devices which are placed uh, at this stage right so this is how the battery is uh, manufactured from um, the left to right and if you if you have opened up any of the cell like this you will uh, go from right to left you will see this kind of materials placed inside and uh, remember it's not uh, very safe to do this right unless and until you are in a very proper chemical environment so usually it is not recommended at all that you open up the battery yourself right and um, for the safety issues and you might have uh, heard of uh, certain safety issues with a lithium ion battery pack of uh, maybe samsung galaxy uh, typical node which is not allowed in the aircraft right you cannot carry that model they, they are not they are banned right because of their design defect in the batteries right so the lithium-ion batteries must be uh, operated in that safe operating region mm -hmm.